The geography in Norway. You can find Norway in the north of Europe, so it's in Scandinavia with Sweden and Denmark. Norway has a very long coastline at 63,000 miles, which is two and a half times around the globe, which makes it one of the longest coastlines in the world, says the Wikipedia. Norway also has something called fjords, which is narrow inlets with almost mountains around. We also have a lot of mountains comparing to other countries in Scandinavia. The tallest mountain is about 2,469 meters. It's called Gallopigin. The Norwegian flag follows the same trend as other Nordic countries. Crosses. All of the Nordic countries have a cross in their flag. They all look pretty similar, the only difference is the colors. The Norwegian flag has a blue cross and a white outline and red corners. It was created by Frederick uh, Meltzer and was first put to use in 17 May 1821. The color blue in the Norwegian flag symbolizes peace, cooperation tr and truth. The red symbolizes the blood of the revolution and the white symbolizes freedom. The colors of the Norwegian flag symbolize freedom because uh, free countries such as the United States and France had these colors in their flag. Norway has a very interesting backstory. I will not go into detail because that will take some time, but I will focus on the Viking Age. Many people from around the world associate Norwegians with the Vikings. That is because we were a big part of this time period. We were one of the biggest thieves and raided many cities and countries. We still find evidence from this time period, and you can today visit some museums and look at the ships and the swords that they used. We have, we have also been through several wars and was under the Swedish leadership of over a hundred years. Norway's National Day is the 17th of May. The occasion is celebrated by eating ice cream, drinking soda, playing outdoor games, walking in parades, and lots more. The parades are usually organized by the local primary schools and the children walk on the streets nearby waving the Norwegian flag. This mostly attracts the younger children while the older ones usually spend their day partying. The Brunad is a Norwegian folk costume that you can find all over Norway. It's normal to give it to teenagers at their confirmation when they are 15 years old. You're supposed to keep the brunette your whole life and eventually pass it on to your kids through many generations. There are hundred different types of brunettes, depending on where in Norway you organize from. Um, a brunette is a festival garment used for celebrations. It's also often worn on events such as confirmations, weddings and sometimes at quizzes. But the day you see most people using the brunette is on the national day. I'm going to talk about Norwegian national symbols. The Norwegian national coat of arms is maybe the most known symbol we have. It has changed a lot over the years and has been changing since the 13th century. The symbol is shaped like a red shield with a yellow lion holding a silver axe in his hands. On the top of the shield it is a crown that represents our parliament, the government, the courts and other state authority. The national coat of arms must only be used by the royal family or the state authorities in the exercise of their public activities. Norway is a rich country with high standards of living. This is because we are one of the countries that are higher in international context when it comes to life expectancy, health status, nutritional status, and housing standard. In Norway, we have large quantities of oil that we sell. The money goes to shares and the oil fund. Norway's oil fund has over 3.220 billion uh, Norwegian kroners that get used for unemployed hospitals, free dentists, etc. In Norway, there are over 200,000 employees who work directly with the sea. In Norway, there are several important sources of income, such as oil, energy and sea bottom. Norway is among the world's 20 largest oil producers 
and it's one of the countries outside OPEC, which produces the most oil per inhabitants. Offshore wind power are a growing industry in Norway. There how Norwegian companies benefit greatly for expertise and technology from offshore oil and gas. In Norway, we have a monarchy, meaning that a monarch is in control of a country. This monarch has often inherited their position and is usually in control of their country until their death. The monarch in Norway is our king, Harald V. The power in Norway is also separated in three, the executive power, the legislative power, and the judicial power. Our king is also in control of these powers. In the Norwegian royal house, we find the king, Harald V, Queen Sonja, Crown Prince Håkon, Crown Prince Mette Marit, and the Princess Ingrid Alexandra. Norway is a representative democracy. Every fourth year, there's a new election of Prime Minister. Anna Solberg has been a favourite for that position for over seven years. Anna is the political leader for a right, one of eight political parties. The power in Norway is divided into three, the executive, the legislative and judicial power. Or in other words, the royal house, the court and the government. Norway has a beautiful nature that consists of fjords, mountains, lakes, forests and so much more. In the winter, Norway is covered in snow. The air is cold and refreshing, and the views are spectacular. In the summer, trees, grass and plants are a light, stunning green. The sky is clear and beautiful. Norway has a coastline along over half of our entire border and a wide variety of animal life. Animals special to Norway is the lynx and polar bears, though polar bears only exist far north in Arctic areas. Norway is so also so far north that sometimes we can see the northern lights. Popular leisure activities in Norway. Here in Norway, some activities are way more popular than in other countries, whereas some is the same or less in popularity than other parts of the world. Football is probably the most popular activity in Norway. This is common to pretty much every other country. Skiing is probably second on this list. For many people, they still do this long into adulthood. But we don't only play sports. We really love to go on long walks out in nature, which is something almost every Norwegian does with family or friends. Norway has a lot of values. One of the values is the mountains and skiing. Norwegians love going skiing and going hiking in the mountains and forests. It's really important for a lot of people to visit a cabin up in the mountains to go skiing and enjoy the weekend or holiday. Some people enjoy slalom more than others, and some like going classical. Originally, Norway was a Christian-based country, which it also to a certain extent is today. But fewer and fewer defines themselves as Christian believers. Nevertheless, there are many who retain Christian traditions, like getting married in the church, celebrating Christmas, Easter and other things. Politically, Norway is not very much influenced by Christianity, but it do have a bigger place in education than the other biggest religions. The second largest religion in Norway is Islam and the majority lives in our capital, Oslo. It is estimated to be around 250,000 Muslims, where the most come from Muslim countries. The Norwegian school system. In Norway, there are 190 school days in each year, and an ordinary school day lasts an average between four to six hours. Only 2.5% of the children go to private schools, such as Steinerskolen and Montessori. In addition to second language, children in Norway learn new Norwegian at the age from 14. This was compiled by Ivar Olsen in 1813 when he traveled to collect all the different dialects in the country. 
In Norway, students begin receiving grades once they enter middle school, and children over the age of 15 have the right to take their own decisions about their own education. Russ is a Norwegian tradition for high school pupils and their final semester. Russ have a traditional suit. This is called a Russ suit. They come in different colors like red, blue, and black. There are other colors too, but they're quite rare. Some Russ form groups and buy a bus and customize it. They usually make a theme song and a name. A theme song and, and get a name. Norwegian food is based largely on the raw materials that's available in the Norwegian mountains, wilderness and coast. Over the past years, Norwegian cuisine has evolved. Mainly because of global influence, the many traditional meals still remain. Brown cheese, pronounced brunost in Norwegian, is a typical Norwegian food. Basically, it's a brown coloured whey cheese with a distinctive caramel flavour. The most common way to serve brown cheese is by simply having it on toast, crisp bread or even with waffles. Norway has a history of farming and Brunos is made from goat's milk so is therefore an example of how Norwegians produce food from their natural environment. Norway has always used their hands a lot. And here in Norway we even have an own subject called arts and crafts. In this class we make things like key change art and we learn about famous artists, artists like Edward Munch and so on. We also have many factories that make handmade stuff, and Nor Norwegian children are raised to use their hands a lot. Norway also was the first ever country to make cross-country skis. Those was made by hand in a factory called the Split Kind Factory. This factory was one of the first by hand factories in the world. The immigration from Norway to America took place in the period 1825 to 1920. Until 1836, immigration was moderate and partly dominated by religious and political minorities. But then the three big waves of immigration began from the 1860s. About 800,000 Norwegians emigrated to America. The motive for mass immigration was very complex, but most of them were poverty, oppression, class division, overpopulation, and big business regulations in Norway in addition to the desire for adventure and rumors about cheap agriculture land in America. What foreigners think about Norwegians? I think that there are especially two things what that foreigners think about Norwegians. The first thing is that they believe that everyone looks the same. White hair and blue eyes. This is not true. In Norway, we have a multi multicultural society with people from all around the world. The second thing that they envy us for is our oil. That we are spoiled here in Norway. Free school, free education, free healthcare, and a freedom, freedom to mean, mean and say anything. They think that we are spoiled and don't appreciate what we got. I, th I think some of that is true, but not all of it. Here in Norway, we are spoiled, yes. I can agree that we need to get better to appreciate things, but I, but I think that we don't deserve that reputation being spoiled. A cheese slicer offers an easy and convenient way to cut cheese into slices. There's two types of cheese slicers. One is for cutting hard cheese and one is for cutting soft cheese. The cheese slicer was patented by Tour Birkland in 1925 and was later put into production in 1927. One day when Tour was trying to cut cheese, he got annoyed that Havard was cut the cheese smoothly. That's why he later invented the cheese slicer. The cheese slicer seems to be something almost only Norwegians use, and here in Norway it has a pretty common and widespread use to cut the cheese. <laughs>